I'm Sophie Gabrielle. I graduated from Photography Studies College in 2015 and besides that I make images. My first interest in taking photos actually happened when my best friend Rob Pack bought himself one of those Lomo fisheye cameras and I'm pretty sure I stole it off him when we were about 14. And I really enjoyed the idea that it's almost like a shield and no one really asks you questions, but you've stolen something from them in a way. I feel with photographs, there's something so simplistic but deep about it. So the further you look into, the further you look into an image, the more of a story it tells. There's something about that accessibility and the rawness of it, especially when you get to photograph people and after a while they start to relax and you get those tiny little moments. Worry for the Fruit the Birds Won't Eat is a series I started um, this time last year and it was my response to all males in my family being diagnosed with cancer and what started as initial, initially just research uh, into why like basically what types of diagnoses there are, the stages, led me down into archival research of the scientific um, images and I found that really interesting that there were these bizarre images especially from like 1930s, 1940s of experimentation within the field and it was this something just intrigued me and I kept going back and slowly collecting more and more pictures and it would be about different um, subjects that related to my family so I started looking at x-rays when my um, grandfather Dixon was diagnosed with lung cancer and from his MRI scans and x-rays you could see all the clusters within his lungs and there was something really intriguing about that. It was like so sad but also so beautiful and it was from this process that only until January this year when my dad was diagnosed with stage 4 prostate cancer did I take it much more seriously because in a way that was, I was kind of so sad that there wasn't much I could do. So if every day I could just take a picture, then I, it was something to keep going. Just drawing from things within your own life is, I guess, what you have to do. And it's almost, for me, it was just something that I had to, had to create and had to do. And I guess now, like the work is still um, in creation and it's still growing because the story hasn't ended yet and there seems to be more and more um, chapters unfolding as time goes on. It took me a long time to actually show people the work at first. It was like my own secret garden um, and just something when like I didn't even want to get out of bed, it would be something that would get me out or get me to like, even though I was so tired, it'd be, just, yeah, it would help to create. It's a collection of both my images and archival imagery, and it's inspired by different parts of the family story. So my mother is really into um, herbal medicine and naturopathy, and she had an idea of that would be possibly a direction that my father could go down in his treatment. And so I started looking at um, botanicals within my area where I live in Melbourne where some are poisonous and some are medicinal and it's these combining them together because it's a this idea that there are cancer fighting properties within nature but if you rely solely on that it's not like it's a very very slim chance and so it's this there's a darker side that runs underneath that idea of going completely like natural um, therapy. One of my favourite images within the series is a portrait of a little boy who has cancer and has been through radiation treatment and he's lost all his hair and I first had this image sitting with me for quite a long time before I decided to do anything with it because it seemed the idea of baldness and something so recognised with illness and I didn't know if that was going to be too direct or too obvious. So I left it in my room under the plate of glass, um, under my bed actually for almost two months and it was actually when my um, granddad Barry got moved into a home like last year 
that I decided to take, start taking the photographs of this little boy and it seems to be one of the driving images of the series because it's gentle but at the same time it's very unsettling to look at and it was the first time within that I knew that I had actually found something that I wanted to pursue and that the, it had more therapeutic qualities. Well, I hope being a foam talent uh, will let other people see my work and give me an opportunity to collaborate with other people, talk about um, where photography is going. I'm really interested in the discussion, especially in fashion photography and as photographers, how we're changing and making movements to stop, I guess, like the overuse of Photoshop and stop these things. And for my own artwork, I hope that perhaps other people will be able to see this work, especially because it's about something that affects most people. Um, whether they have a terminal illness themselves or they know someone who does, I think it's that idea that it has a healing process within it and that they can find that within art. Um, I think that with foam, the more people who look at my work, perhaps they'll want to show it and start that conversation.